No, 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 stop. Everybody, no, no, calm down. Everybody, please, please, please stop. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, today, everybody, is your lucky day because I'm going to show you how to kick off a photogrammetric project in Ertis Imagine. So, uh, I'm assuming you have a few pieces of essential information. You're probably going to need, uh, in our case, uh, some images and uh, you're also going to need some additional information like a camera calibration report and some exterior orientation parameters the uh, rotations and translations of the photographs so once you've got that information then you should be good to go to start off a brand new project so what we'll do is we'll go to the file tab in our ribbon and we're going to go new and select photogrammetric project and the new block file will open up uh, your block file your BLK file is a file that's going to store all of your project settings uh, from beginning to end so make sure that this uh, file is kept in a safe place uh, and uh, always back it up because it is the uh, control panel of all of your uh, project information so select a location I'm going to be working in a area called Okotoks for this project so I will create my new file and then the model setup will take me through a wizard so what you will do is you will select your sensor type so pick the type of sensor that you're working with there's various uh, types here I'm using a camera sensor and my camera is a digital camera if you're using an analog camera then select frame but for our case uh, in this project uh, digital images I'll select digital camera select OK and it'll ask me now for a uh, reference information so I'm going to need to supply a horizontal and uh, vertical reference frame so what I'll need to do here uh, is uh, consult some of the metadata so what I'll have to do is take a look in my project details and see if I can find out any information uh, and I've got some uh, uh, metadata selected here so I can see that I've got a NAT83 datum uh, the coordinate system is UTM zone 12 so that should be enough for me to uh, continue with this so what I'll do is I'll click the set button and uh, go ahead and uh, find the coordinate system that I want to use in this case it's UTM and uh, my sphere type will be uh, because it's a NAT83 datum it should be a GRS80 uh, ellipsoid or spheroid in this case as they want to call it and my datum name will be a standard NAT83 uh, unless I have a Canadian NAD83, I'll use that one. It'll be a little bit more, uh, act more accurate. Uh, select the UTM zone, in my case 12, and uh, how you want the axis orientated. Note you can also type in an EPSG code here, and it will find the uh, coordinate system and projection for you. Okay, uh, and I'm going to say OK to this and your vertical reference frame if you know what that is go ahead and set that to uh, that's not stated so I'm gonna leave it as a default as WGS 84 but you should uh, take some time and investigate and find out what the actual vertical uh, reference frame is for your project click next and uh, your rotation system should be by default Omega Phi Kappa and you'll have to figure out your average flying height so this is your flying height above the train and if you don't know what it is you can uh, kind of figure it out based on um, some of the metadata that you have so if you take a look at your um, uh, exterior orientation parameters uh, it should give you a elevation above sea level which is this column here okay every and you'll check your own exterior orientation file there and uh, also if you know the area where that is in this case I'm in Okotoks you can go ahead and just kind of find a average terrain so what I usually do is just go ahead and add in a path you know back and forth a couple of places something like that say okay once you've got that path in there you can go ahead and right click on the path and go show elevation profile and that'll bring you up a profile and notice that uh, up here in the elevation section it gives you lowest medium and high train so in my case my average train is about 1067 so that's my ground uh, surface uh, elevation and if I go back to my uh, EO uh, parameters uh, this is my elevation of the plane above sea level so what I would do then in this case is just go ahead and uh, calculate the difference between the two so I would take that number minus whatever my 
average terrain was in Google Earth, which is 1067, and uh, subtract 1067 from that, and that'll give me about 1655. So in this box here, I'll put in about 1655, and I can continue on. Now the next thing you'll want to do is probably go in and edit your camera uh, parameters. So what you'll need to do is uh, consult your camera calibration report. Uh, so go ahead and uh, take a look at your camera calibration report and you can see that uh, in this case this is a UltraCam camera. I will uh, just go ahead and um, set this uh, as the name here, UltraCam. And, uh, I will consult the uh, calibration port for a few more details in here so I'm going to go back to my report and uh, take a look at things uh, particularly it's wanting to know my focal length so uh, if I take a look in my uh, specs I can see that the calibration report uh, states that uh, from the last calibration we have 100.5 millimeter um, focal length so I'll go ahead and input that 100.5 uh, and you can leave the principal and offset at zero. If there's no fiducials, you can leave the radial lens distortion as blank. And uh, it's always a good idea to save your calibration report uh, in case you need it later. Because uh, we can always uh, recall that information, say OK. And uh, from there, we can click OK one more time to finish off the project. And that will. Uh, set up all of our initial settings so that uh, should take care of part one of uh, setting up a project please uh, take a look at part two of setting up a photogrammetric project because there is also many other critical settings in there that you will need to set up uh, as well so take a look at that second part and uh, thanks for watching have a great day bye now